Today, in our responsive portfolio landing page website we are dealing with about section. Also, we will make these cute boxes move with our cursor but only in large screen. Otherwise these boxes stay display known. You may have noticed that these buttons were a little different in the main demo. That's because I mistakenly added the wrong border color but don't worry, we will take care of it here. This guy again from the homepage header. I am fed up of seeing his face at this point. But if you are interested, check out the previous video in this playlist, where we coded him to look more cool. Let's check out how it is supposed to look in the small screens of mobile and tablet. Before you guys come at me for the error on the right top corner, it's the same as in the previous video, where we were targeting multiple classes while only having one. Since for now this is our one, and only section we will continue to have this problem, until we create a new section in the next video. Let's see how it's supposed to look on the tablet screen. Hopefully you guys are noticing the difference between about section layout for different screen sizes. I hope this demo looks pretty enough for you guys to subscribe to my channel. I assure you I am not always this boring. It's just this AI guy that is talking to you that makes me look boring. Let's go hunt down my channel intro. Let's see our today's image and start our VS Code browser. This is the image we will be using today. Forgive my slow laptop. Even with sped up video web pages loading slow. Oh, this web page is not loading here. Finally, we did it. Now let's code our HTML. Alright so our plan is to keep all the sections inside main so it looks pretty and clean code. You guys will see me using a lot of Emmet shortcuts. So if you don't know how to do it just watch my short about it. Link in the description. We will be using a lot of reusable classes obviously. You guys can see all the reusable classes from the first video in this playlist but I will show you all of them as we keep using them. This is where our cute squares comes in. We will be using some JavaScript to deal with them. Fun trick, you can select multiple places in the code by pressing Alt key while selecting places. This helps you write same thing in multiple places all at once. This part right here has CSS code already written in reusable classes. I have written this data value numbers in order to declare each square movements. We will understand how this works more when we will tackle JavaScript. This is where we will add the hot guys image and some text regarding yourself. Make sure to tell about yourself based on the career you are seeking. Make it concise and intriguing to pique your employer's interest. Here is me giving you Lorem Ipsum text while telling you to write something deep about yourself. We also have buttons for mailing straight to your email address and button that downloads your CV. Make sure to make this portfolio very user-friendly. The easy access to contact you and download your CV right away as soon as they click the button helps them reach you easier making your chances of getting adopted by your employer higher. So make sure to give the correct email address in the ref after mail to and correct path to your legit CV, not this blank CV I have. I have a CV folder with an empty PDF file named CV. This download button will ensure the CV gets downloaded right away once clicked. Remember I said that the border color is making me cringe in the second button? Well now it's sorted. Here comes those boxes with some info on our skills. Considering the skills section that we will make in the next video, this should be the summary of your skills.
For icons, we are using Boxicons. I will provide link to Boxicons in the description. Now copy paste it 5 times making it into 6 info boxes. While we are changing the icon for each box and changing the subtitle, hit that subscribe button by accident. I assure you, I won't tell anyone. In my previous videos there are a lot of important stuff like header navigation homepage and project setup so please don't forget to watch it. It's as pretty as this hopefully. Oh by the way, this new I dude is called good guy. I hope he doesn't bore you too much. Let's see how it looks right now. As tasteless as it looks I think we are done with HTML let's go CSS. Time to make this look sexy with CSS. Let me just copy this. When are we getting to the about section part here? Ah yeah so here is the thing. We will be using the H unit here because we want the main elements to be not hiding under home page. And if we use other units we will have to add different value for each screen size. So we are using 43 VH to accommodate different screen sizes being below home page just a little. Fun fact we want to have overall text in center unless we want something otherwise. It is not always cool to have text in the center all the time. Here comes the about section. In about wrapper we set some max width, centers content, and adds gap. If you are wondering how this gap property will work, well that's because we added the rel class where we triggered the flex properties. Here we go again with our model getting all the attention, but then we got a styles images with fixed dimensions, box shadow, and border. My head plays a lot of songs for every scenario like here it started playing attention song by Charlie Dude. Fun fact, this about section won't need any media queries. I like to avoid them as much as I can, but we will use them for cute squares though. Now, we take care of texts and buttons on our website. Here we align text left and sets max width. Hmm, looks cool in general but let's make it more better. Let's add some margin since it is being quite clingy with the buttons. Remember we have another part of about section containing 6 info boxes right after these buttons. Let's do them. Wait, I just remember we have a flex gang named Rao. Why not add that Rao class in our HTML? Well it's flexing alright. Let's make these info boxes look nice and sexy by styling the info box with border, padding, and shadow. See how congested these boxes look without padding. Personally I think the perfect width for mobile screen size for any box is 15 rem including space on the outside. I hope you guys understand what I am referring to since English is not my language looks dope right this video creator is dumb continuously showing what each class and variable looks like shouldn't they let viewers watch previous videos to see the classes and variables made earlier like other creators surely that will get this creator views so let's add this button style where we set the width for child elements and obviously we made our lives easier with our route class Buttons are behaving quite well now but these info boxes have no space between them. Let's add gap and see what happens. Looks nice but too much gap in between boxes. Max width property give the elements rules to grow within its limits. Meaning the container for these info boxes won't exceed the width of 750 pixels. 
Since this max width ain't working, well how about we make sure these boxes stay in the center of the container. Looks good on large screen let's see the rest. Yeah that's what I am talking about. We are done with these info boxes but this model needs a better frame than this. At the end of the day it's all about the use of correct unit. I once got 19 marks out of 20 just because I forgot to add units at the end of my answers. I was this close to being a show off topper. Look how pretty our text and buttons look. To the point I want to punch the wall. I prefer to play around style properties in here and then apply them in the real code. This helps me a lot to debug faster without ruining the code. Here is the issue. Apparently our model requires a lot of gap around it. Let's debug our buttons too. Found the culprit. It's always the gap. Everything looks good on all screen sizes without using media queries except text. I don't know how to explain it but it's just giving bad vibes. Everything was going so well but then this one word had to be alone in the next line. We promised not to leave any widows and orphans in the first video. Looks much better now but let's be sure everything looks good on all screen sizes. Let's finalize this margin for text. About's good. Let's show squares on big screens with queries. So considering we went rogue and displayed our squares to known and opacity low and probably visibility to hidden. Let's change these property values for 1020 for pixels or larger screen size. In order to save these cute squares from existential crises. In order to add parallax effect on object class we will use JavaScript. I mean who doesn't like elements moving along with the mouse. Now let's see if these square shapes look good enough. Don't worry about these icons here. They display in a second when my webpage fully loads. Well these cute squares look cute again so let's give them parallax movement with JavaScript. I should definitely make a video on JavaScript event listeners. So today we are using mouse move event listener and adding parallax effect with it. We will add this parallax to the class object on mouse movement. When the mouse moves, it calculates the movement values based on the data value attribute of each element. Then, it transforms the elements horizontally and vertically using the calculated values, creating a parallax effect where elements move relative to the mouse movement. This style property in JavaScript is used to access the inline CSS styles of an HTML element. Well that's all for JavaScript today. Or not. What did I do now? There needs to be an autocorrect off option within my reach at all times. I hate it.
By the way we can change how much an element should move in response to mouse movement by changing data value. Higher values lead to more movement, while lower values reduce it. Where is shape 1? Found it. Shake it, shake it, shake it. That's very cringe from the AI. Well, let's see our final product that is not another sped up video. Large screen looks good, but let's test the functionality of it. See how it will take your employer straight to mailing you. And then there is this download button downloading your CV. Looks practical right? Let's see mobile and tablet screen sizes too. Hopefully it looks good enough for you to fall in love with this site. And please watch my videos in this playlist, so you guys don't miss out on the rest of my dead humor. If you guys have dealt with my dead humor for almost 17 minutes straight then,